Hey guys, Greg here at Let's Solve Diameter of Binary Tree, lead code number 543. So we are given the root of a binary tree and we want to return the length of the diameter of that tree. The diameter of a binary tree is the length of the longest path between any two nodes in the tree. And this path may or may not pass through the root. And the length of a path between two nodes is represented by the number of edges between them. So it's the most amount of edges that we can get throughout the tree in a consecutive path. Okay, so if we were given this tree as input, well, the diameter is the length of the longest path and the number of edges of it. So it's one this way, two over here. We don't want to go down here because we can actually go over here and get another one. So we can get from this node all the way over to this node if we take this path, which is made up of four edges. So in this example, the diameter of the tree we'd want to return is four. Now in this example, we can see the diameter actually is passing through the root of the tree. Okay, it's passing through this node. That doesn't actually have to be the case. Basically, if we were to extend this a little bit, we'll say add a seven over here and eight over here, we'll add some over here. And if we just extend this one more here, so we'll extend this a little bit, we'll give this a 10 and we'll give over here an 11. Well, notice now that if you go through the root, the original root we were given, we're stuck with just one from the right side and then you can go all the way down to the bottom. So that would give, you know, we could either go over here or we could go over here. Either way, you're going to get one from here, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you're going to get a diameter of five if you use the root. But if we don't use the root and we actually use this thing's diameter, well, then we actually have one, two, three up to it, four, five, six. Okay, so you get a better diameter by not using the root node as part of it. So as the question says, the diameter of the whole tree, the diameter is the longest path throughout the tree between any two nodes. And it happens to not use the root. It actually uses this node as the root. So it's basically, you know, curving over at that point. So we can think about it as like every single node, they actually each have a diameter. This thing, if you were to treat this as the root, well, this thing has a diameter of zero because it has no left and has no right, we're saying we can't go back up because you're saying like this thing's diameter in total, well, it is actually just, you know, zero, it's nothing. And so if you were to look at this thing's diameter, well, it is going to give one from over here and we can also get four from over here. So if you're to root with this tree, well, then its diameter is five. And if you were to root with this tree, as we saw, well, its diameter is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so its diameter, if you root here, its diameter diameter is six. And what we want in the question is the biggest diameter that we can find here. Even though, of course, we're given this as the root, we don't necessarily want its, you know, diameter because that's five. We want in the tree, the longest path that we can get between any two nodes that is going to be rooted right here. And so that is going to give a diameter of six. So we want to look at every single node in here and get each of their diameters. And we also want to keep track of basically a max diameter where we'll have this as like a global variable, say it's equal to zero so far. And if we were to look at say this node right here, well, it would have a diameter of zero because it has no left, it has no right. And so really that's just zero. That doesn't find a better max diameter. But then if we were to look at this node right here, well, it has a left of one. We have one edge going left here. We have nothing going right. And so this thing's diameter, well, we could find out that its diameter is one. And then we'd update that by saying, okay, well, we found a better diameter than zero. We found a diameter of one. Can we do better? Well, if we look at this thing's diameter, it's got one from the right. So it's got one there. It's actually got two from the left. And so it's actually going to be two plus one, which is equal to three. We can see a path of three right here. And so we say, okay, we actually found a better one. We found a three. So we're going to keep this pattern up and we're going to do a depth first search. So here, we're going to initialize our max diameter at zero, and we'll look at the diameter of each of the nodes. And we'll do that through a depth first search. So basically, we're going to keep going left, keep going left, keep going left, keep going left. And we're really going to look at this thing's diameter first. Any node's diameter is equal to the height of the left, so basically the height of its left subtree, plus the height of its right subtree. 
not the diameter of the left and the diameter of the right, the height of the left plus the height of the right. Why is that true? Well, let's look at this node because if we do a DFS going left, that's what we're gonna see first. Its left height is gonna be zero and its right height will be zero. And so its diameter is simply the left height plus the right height, which is zero. So this thing has a diameter of zero. We'll see if that updates our maximum. It doesn't happen to. But if we make this function return the height, so our DFS will return the height, well, then we go over here and this thing will know that its left height is one and this thing its right height is going to be zero okay now it can check its diameter and so its diameter is just the left height plus the right height and so this thing's diameter is one we can see that it's just this one edge here okay so that actually beats our maximum and so this thing will have a diameter of one this thing's height is going to be well if you remember the height formula height is equal to one plus the max of the height of the left plus the height of the the right here okay that's how you get the height and so this thing this thing is going to be one plus the max of the left and the right that is one plus one and so this thing's height is two so now this thing knows that its left height is two this thing's right height is one and so this thing is going to have a diameter of the left height plus the right height which is three okay so if it has a diameter of three that actually updates our maximum well its height is one plus the max of the left and the right that is one plus plus two and so this thing this thing knows that its left height is three and I'm not going to do all the calculations but for this guy you know it would actually figure out that its right height is one two three and so this thing's right height is three that means its diameter would actually be six and so it would get that this is a six and that would update our maximum okay okay so that's the maximum diameter we've seen so far and just to trace it out it would be one two three four five six okay well this thing's height its height would be one plus the max of the left and the right and so this is going to be four this thing over here this height is going to be one and so this thing's diameter is going to be four plus one which is five that does not create a bigger maximum as we saw and then our total general function would return the max diameter which happens to be six so let's write the code Okay, so we want to set largest diameter equal to a global here. And so that we will set to be zero for now. And this is actually going to change to something at the end, but I'm purposely making this wrong to kind of explain something at the very end. It's a very weird Python topic. Now we're gonna make a helper function, which is called height. So it just returns the height of any root, okay? So how do we do that? Well, if the root is none, well, then that shouldn't contribute to the height. And so that thing's height is zero. Otherwise, we need to get the left height is equal to the height on the root dot left. And we also need to get the right height, which is equal to the height on the root dot right. And we'll make this return the height. And so it will be return one for itself plus the max of the left height and the right height. So this function as is would return the height of any node. Now in here, we can actually get the current diameter because we have the left height and the right height. We can get that the current diameter is equal to the left height plus the right height. And now that is the current diameter it may or may not be the biggest that we've seen because this is just a diameter of you know whatever root we happen to be calling this on so we want to set largest diameter equal to the maximum of the largest diameter itself and the current diameter okay so you'll see this type of pattern a lot the largest diameter is going to be the max of itself and the current diameter so if diameter is bigger it'll be set to that otherwise it's just going to keep staying as it is Okay, and then from here, all we'd have to do is just call height on the root because that's automatically going to do a DFS or a depth first search through this whole thing. And it's going to update the largest diameter. And then we could just return the largest diameter. Please keep watching the video because this is actually wrong as is. This is not going to work. Because of a weird and possibly unexpected error, cannot access local variable largest diameter when it is not associated with the value. Okay, so basically what's happening here, and I'll just show you how to fix it very quickly and then explain it is the way to fix this would be to put this as a list of one number and from there you'd have to adjust a couple things largest diameter at zero is equal to the max of largest diameter at zero and diameter and then you'd also want to return this so that is actually what allows this to work now it is working great 
Okay, so the reason that we needed to make this a list and we no longer get that weird unaccessible error is because taking it back to a second what it just was. Well, as it is here, in this statement right here, this is a problem. This is saying that a local variable to this call of the function is largest diameter is this stuff. Now I'm saying local variable because it is local to this call of the function. As in, as you're going through a depth first search on these nodes here, it is actually keeping the call stack open. It will make a recursive call stack. And so each of these nodes would actually have a largest diameter, just like each of them would have a left height, a right height, and their own diameter. You don't want largest diameter to be local Local to this particular call of this function or whichever root you're talking about, we just have one largest diameter. And so we want to particularly say that this global variable across all calls of this root, remember that's the whole point, is to try and find the largest diameter so that here you're not saying a local variable is equal to this, you are referring directly to this global variable and that particular spot of memory that is going to get updated to this. So it's a slight change, but just note that this syntax of sub zero saying this to be something that sets a particular memory spot and this this is saying this local variable is now equal to that so they are different things you would want to make that a list Okay, so let's talk about the time and space complexity of this function. Well, time is just going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the tree. We're basically just doing a bunch of constant stuff for every single node in the tree. We're calculating its left and right height, the diameter and the largest diameter, all of this stuff. It is just constant operations per call of the function. Per node in this tree is just a bunch of constant stuff. We're visiting every part, and so that is O of n. And the space complexity, this is actually doing a depth first search here. It is is going down to the bottom and collecting it back upwards and so you're keeping that call stack open and so this is actually going to be big O of H or H is the number of nodes in the tree. It is going to keep the height of the call stack open. I hope this was helpful guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.